I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA 5-Minute Practice Exam, and today's topic is OSPF. We're going to present you with five questions on OSPF. Some are going to have multiple choice and some are not, and we're going to go through the questions at a pretty rapid clip, because with OSPF, as you know, there are always extra details to be analyzed, and we're going to be doing that at the end of the video on live Cisco routers and switches whenever possible. So we may go a minute or two here over the five minute limit here, but it will definitely be worth your time. Let's dive straight into question one. How can you double the default OSPF dead time on an Ethernet interface without using the IP OSPF dead command? And this is the kind of question that may seem like a trick question or, you know, why do I need to know that? But there are two or three different things you need to know to solve this question. So it's a good question of those analytical abilities of yours as well. So take a moment for that one, and we're going to head into question two. What is the effective difference between the default information originate and default information originate always commands? And the answer, one word, is not acceptable here. <laughs> we need a little more detail than that. What's the major difference? Question three, define the term OSPF internal router. Just a quick one there, a couple of router types we need to know about for the NA exam. Question four, what's the default OSPF metric for a T1 line? And then finally, what specific term is used to describe the OSPF metric? It's a word we really don't use with RIP or with EIGRP. All right, so let's dive back in and take a look at these questions, starting with question one. How can you double this dead time? Well, like I said, you've got to know a couple things to solve this question. First off, you need to know what the default dead time is on an Ethernet interface. And what I'm going to do is bring up live equipment here. Routers two and three in this particular pod have a OSPF adjacency over their E0 interfaces. So I'm going to run show IP OSPF interface E0. And you can see that the hello time is 10 seconds and the dead time is 40. And that's what we expect to see on a broadcast segment. We want to double this dead command or this dead value, but we can't use the IP OSPF dead interval command. So what can we use? Let's look at those commands here on the Ethernet interface for IP OSPF. This is what we want to double. And to do that, we're going to use the hello interval command because by default, the dead time is going to be four times the hello time in OSPF. So if we double the hello time here, the dead time will dynamically double. So since we know the hello interval time is 10 seconds on a broadcast segment, we're going to put 20 here. Always use iOS help and double check your values whenever it's time based or size of data based because sometimes with time you're going to have minutes, then you're going to have commands that use seconds, then you're going to have commands that use hours and days. So always take a few extra seconds and use iOS help there. So that should effectively double the Ethernet zero uh, dead time and you can see that it does just that. It goes to 80 seconds. And of course we also know we might have a problem with an adjacency there that we still have here to two. We're going to come back in a few seconds and see if we still have that because we just changed some very important timers on one router without changing them on the other. While we're waiting for that, let's talk about these two commands. Both of these commands allow an OSPF router to generate and advertise a default router rather to advertise it. If you use the first command, default information originate, in order for the OSPF router to advertise that default route, it's got to already have one in its routing table. With the always option, that allows an OSPF router to advertise a default route that it does not actually have in its own routing table. And in future webinars and videos here, we'll go into some more detail about this command and where you would use that. But it does work out well, especially near the edge of a network where routers tend to have just one next hop for all destinations. But that's the effective difference between those two commands. For question three, an OSPF internal router is simply a router that has all of its interfaces in the same area. That's it. Question four, what's the default OSPF metric for a T1 line? Let's go back to our live pod and check that out. And you'll also notice here 
that when the dead timer expired on this router, the adjacency went down because, and a little bonus lesson for you here, we had an adjacency that worked fine between routers two and three. Then we changed the hello time, which in effect also changed the dead time on router three. When you have that hello dead timer mismatch, your adjacency cannot hold. So if you change it before an adjacency forms, it's never going to form. If you change it after an adjacency forms, you're going to lose that adjacency. Ooh, that's a lot of adjacencies. Let's go up to router 1 and run this command on a serial interface. And I'm going to scroll over just a bit here and show you that that default cost is 64. And that is the answer to question 5 as well. That's a term unique to OSPF. The OSPF metric that you're going to see is uh, going to be referred to as cost. I want to see if we had any OSPF routes here. We do remember in your brackets here, another little bonus up for you here, that first number inside your brackets in your OSPF routes is going to be the administrative distance, which by default is 110, and the cost of the route will follow that. And we'll talk about all these other values in upcoming webinars and videos as well. Hope you enjoyed today's exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.